In this video, you're going to see one of Central Asia's most bizarre foods. Look, transformation. These are called milk lungs. Soon, you're going to see how they're made and how they taste. But first, let's back up. To find these dairy-filled lungs, I had to come to Central Asia, a collection of countries from Kazakhstan to Afghanistan. Right in the heart of Central Asia, you'll find Uzbekistan, which is where I'm taking you today. Wow! Dude, where are you? I don't <laughs> I can't see you. I'm on a mission to show you some of the most creative, oh my God. twisted, <gasps> mouth-watering creations few people have seen before. Holy cow. It all starts here. They have something called, well, what do you call it in your language? It's such a unique thing that we don't have name. So description is the name. What is it? Milk inside of the lung. I don't need to explain more. We're going to go Let's in. See. Let's go. Let's go. <sighs> Tandoor Kebab started just four years ago. Their menu includes the greatest hits from around Fergana Valley. This is Chef Mahamajan, the only one trusted to make this dish. Oddly enough, this non-bread dish starts with a dough. A blend of flour, water, and salt. Knead it up and let it rest. In a basin, he adds hot cow milk, sliced onions, and that big ball of dough. The dough is constantly and methodically massaged and mixed in the basin until it becomes weak and stringy. After some serious dough squeezing, he removes the glob along with the onions. All that remains is doughy, oniony milk. The milk isn't just any milk. He mixed the dough in with the milk and then threw the dough away. The dough makes the milk more thicker and it stays in the lung. If you put just milk, it will go out like a water. So it's changing the physical properties of it. Yeah. I knew it. Can you feed it to like a cow, cow or yeah, something? Yeah. They feed it to yeah, cows. He said cows gonna eat it. And then they make more milk. Yes. <laughs> Those lungs are empty now. Everyone who's watching, do a big exhale. Ooh, that's what your lungs look like inside. And later. They're gonna get full of stuff. You're gonna see what kind of stuff right over here. So he grabs a lung and he has a carrot here. He's looking for the right fit. The carrot is like the cork on a wine bottle. If it squeezes out too easily, he doesn't like it. Now we're gonna finally see the transformation that takes place as he puts it in. This is like two liters of milk going inside of here. Look, transformation. How would you describe that? Alveolus inside yeah. of the lung, they're being filled and they used to be pink, but now they're all white. You're gonna give it a poke? Is it hard? Very firm. He puts in pepper and then he hits it with some oil. Of course. We're in Uzbekistan. This is the land of the world's richest, heaviest food. He has to just dump two cups of oil in there. And then slowly, you got to, it's important to, got to massage it a bit. It's full. He corks it with the carrot. And then the final step, he's going to tie it off with a string. Here we have two. Healthy lung. Looks like this. It looks very healthy. Completely full of seasoned onion milk. Next, the filled and corked lungs are boiled in water for two hours before moving on to the next step. We're going to come back to this soon. But in the meantime, I want to show you a style of cooking that goes way back. Right here, the action is happening. Here we are. I'm about to burn my leg hairs off through my jeans somehow. These are tandoor ovens. Using cotton wood, these reach up to hundreds of degrees. It's so big, you could fit like six human bodies in here. And they're used to cook some of the world's most succulent meats, including fat tail sheep sausage. Do you know you have sheep unlike any other sheep in the world? Yeah, yeah, I know. He knows? He said, I know, and then he grabbed the butt. Instinct, you know? When you see it, you grab it. You don't see this on just any sheep. A lot of sheep got bony little butts. There's nothing there. Like... This is a fat-tailed sheep, a genetically mutated species whose entire tail has become one swaying Kardashian-like posterior. It doesn't even have a purpose, it's just hanging there. But that's where all the flavor is. Where is the most flavor in this sheep? Some people like the ribs, some people like neck. The whole unique thing about the sheep is that it's flavorful all the way. All right, I thought he was gonna say the butt. I disagree. I think the, all the flavor is in the butt. I agree with you, man. Thank you. He's saying that he's gonna take the fat ass out of it. Look at this whole thing. It's just a big chunk of fat. Wow. Boom. Sheep booty. Aside from copious amounts of butt fat, the sausage gets plenty of protein too. Now he's gonna butcher it with the X. With 15 years of experience, Chef Zahiruddin precisely portions out each pile. Final result, 100 pounds of meat and fat ready for some seasoning. Salt, pepper, cumin, all mixed up, then joined by Uzbek lemon, including the lemon zest. Add hot water, mix once more, and it's ready for the next step. 
In the meantime, those milk lungs have been boiling for about an hour, slowly turning them solid. Oh, it's like a water balloon filled with hot water. The inside's getting a little bit firmer, a little bit harder. I think it's on its way to becoming solid. I can't wait to try this out, even from here to the plate. What's that gonna look like? Are they gonna just slice it like a loaf of bread? Now, back to the sausage. Stuff the seasoned meat into sheep intestine and tie it closed with a string. He portions each sausage so it's plump and girthy, but still short enough to fit in the pan. I've seen sausages hung, I've seen them smoke, I've seen them cooked on a grill, but here they're filling up a huge rack full of big pans of thick sausage. <laughs> And that's it, it doesn't actually touch the bottom. He puts the hazan upside down, and then now this has to be sealed. Soon, in about an hour, we're gonna take it out and test this juicy sausage and see how it tastes. While we wait, I do believe we've got some milk lungs that have finished cooking. As you can see, they've kind of shrunk down, they've shriveled up a little bit. Like, uh, what's a good example of something that shrivels? Oh. It is all one consistency. It's like jello-y almost, gelatinous you might say. Take a look here. On the outside, that's lung. On the inside, right here, that's kind of hardened cooked milk. Right here, he's put on a seasoning, a mixture of chili and salt. Oh. My bro. I feel overwhelmed. What did I just eat? Well, I need some time to digest that, mostly mentally. Actually, what I really need is the crew, so I need to share this experience with him. Before we can sit down to eat, we need to bring some sausages to this party. Wow, it's so much, isn't it? Look at all the steam. You guys can't see anything, can you? <laughs> Big review. Wow. The sausage is completely cooked through, boiling in its own juices right now. Oh my God, look at it. If you like living on the edge, try using four handkerchiefs. And it won't break, he said. No? Yeah. To lift up more than 100 pounds of sizzling meat. Stop, stop, you stop. Okay, he's gonna pour off some of the liquid right oh. now. Okay, lift, 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 okay. lift, lift, lift. We got it over. We put it down. I got it. The meat, it's amazing how much it's cooked down, full of fat and water, and even the liquid itself looks pretty tasty. Yeah, it's going in, it was just a sausage, now it's a full course, like a soup and the main course. <laughs> right. Allow me to officially introduce Bekruz, the unofficial ambassador of Uzbekistan tourism. Once it became easier for outsiders to travel to this country, the crews bent over backwards to introduce content creators and their audiences to the rich food secrets of Central Asia. It's still very hot, but I think we can break off a piece. Ooh. Boom, that's yours. Oh, thank you. Enjoy it. Oh, dude, it's so hot. But manageable. Speak for yourself. <laughs> so good. That's so delicious. The cumin gives it a beautiful depth of flavor. Yeah, really, seasoning is amazing. The meat is soft, juicy. It's very tender. And it's just like eating little pieces of steak. It's a really unique type of sausage. A lot of sausages, you know, they're ground up. They're really fine. I mean, a hot dog is just one. Sorry. Are you comparing this to hot dogs? The other thing is that if you were making sausage with like beef, almost always they would add some pork yeah. for the fat content. But here, it's got that doomba. Ratio of the meat and fat is just perfect. Oh. It's amazing, man. Awesome. Our final strangely satisfying feast includes sausage and milk lumps, plus tandoor kebab, bread, and Uzbek lemon. Let me explain. I thought some people might be confused earlier when I'm talking about the sausages being made, and I'm saying in voiceover that they're putting lemon on there, and people watching are like, um, that is an orange. Sonny forgot what oranges are. That's a lemon? Yes, so we had a local biologist guy who came up with a new species of a lemon. He crossed the tangerine with a lemon. Oh, so it's like a trans fruit. Yeah, trans. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm open to that. It's not an orange. Super citrusy. That is exactly a cross between an orange and a lemon. Woo! It's a really good palate cleanser. Perfect. Orange lemon. That's a first for me. We've tried a lot of this stuff so far, but he especially has not tried this, and I need to try it again to really wrap my mind around it. Yeah. Wait, what are you feeling right now? I don't know, man. I have really mixed feelings. I don't like gooey stuff. Look how jelly it is. Look how yeah. like... Let's do it. Let's do it. Last. We must build up to that. But first... This tandoor lamb is one of their signature items. The lamb meat is marinated overnight using a spice blend of cumin, nutmeg, pepper, paprika, and more. Then it spends three hours in the fiery tandoor until it's fully cooked through. I saw a similar preparation last time I was here in Uzbekistan, but they were using like a mud tandoor, using this lattice structure to hold all the meat. This is not so dissimilar, except for it's in that big underground tandoor. Oh. Mm. 
Very tender. The flavors are a bit mild. It's just lightly seasoned. I like the jerky part. Look, it's like a beef jerky. Oh yeah, there's like some crunchy part. Oh yes, this kind of crust that's developed here. That is where a lot of the flavors are. That is good. It's almost like creamy and buttery. People think it's fatty and it's not a good way. Like, oh, it's fatty, but it is not. It's fat, but like in a good way. Yeah. Like me. <laughs> oh, bread. This is a local flatbread. And at this restaurant, they make their own fresh daily. Made from wheat flour, butter, and milk. But the best part is the baking. Done inside a hot clay oven, built specifically for this type of bread. This bread is awesome. So soft, like a freshly baked pizza crust. Yeah. Man, Central Asia, the food is so hard to pin down because for me, at least in the US, we don't have enough references for it. So we have like East Asian restaurants, Indian restaurants, we have Middle Eastern food, and then this is something converging between all of those. Because of the Silk Road, we got a little bit of that, a little bit of that, a melting pot. Different cultures, different cuisines merged into new ones. Speaking of melting pot, this just came out of the melting pot a second ago. Yeah. Lungs, the feeling, gosh, oh, it feels exactly like tofu. Is it bug you? It is bugging me. Oh my God, okay. You ready? Yeah. Don't hide your expression. We want to see it. Your eyes are the window to your soul. And also your mouth is a little bit too. Man, but you know what? I love it, man. You love it's it? so good. Really? Yeah. Mm, so, so. so I, it needs bread. I've yet to describe it. Man. For you, what's it like? At least for me, it doesn't look that appealing. Isn't that the best part about this show? It is. It's like breaking your preconceived notions of, of about what could my possibly... own culture, like you know. Yes, and you are from here. It's awesome that you get to see this, even now looking at it, thinking, "Oh, this is not going to be good." And you're kind of into it. Very salty. Wow. But very rich, right? Extremely rich. It's really hard to describe. I can't tell any difference between what is milk and what is lung. Mm -hmm. It's all just become one solid, congealed consistency. So fascinating. It's incredibly inventive. Whoever thought of this, wow. Nice work. I've tried boiled lung. I know how it tastes like, and it's not most flavorful meat because of the texture or aftertaste, but the milk washed down all the negative aspect and brought that interesting taste to it. It's the perfect partnership, kind of like meme. And? And like if I could clone myself. Next up, we'll be tasting a rarely appreciated body part that people here go crazy for the neck of a sheep. First of all, what kind of steroids was a sheep on? He was doing a lot of bench press. I mean, take a look. This isn't even the skin. That is the fat under the skin. You can see layers of protein and fat, and then there's bones. All of that gets semi-stewed, semi-cooked. Super, super tender, bro. Is this something that you can find all over the country? It's available throughout the country, but especially Andijan, people really like sheep neck. Perfect, I'm gonna put this down. We've got our sheep neck. Now let's head to the restaurant to cook it up. Chuntak Restaurant has been here slanging out necks and other regional foods for over 25 years. Now, usually, a lot of people that go to a restaurant, they completely skip this step. They just order from the menu. Yeah, well, they say medium rare, that's it. Boring. Instead, what we get to see is how this neck really works. Chef Muhammad is here to demonstrate how the neck goes from a hulking mass to an edible delight. Almost like he's cutting it into little neck steaks, but he can't get all the way through because of the neck bone. The yeah. spine is still there. This man has an axe. But it's not going to be easy. I wore the wrong color clothes today. Or pretty. Oh, that was neat. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Ah, so that's neck. He's actually dicing the neck or slicing it this way. Making little neck steaks almost like it's a freaking tuna or something. Quick question since we're here. Uzbekistan, the land of many things. The land of plov, the land of samsa. Also, land of thick eyebrows. Is that true? Look at this guy, he has magnificent eyebrows. Look at me, I'm a freak. Next, season the sheep steak with a special chef-made blend containing 11 different spices, including significant traces of cumin. First, a layer of meat, then a layer of salt and seasonings. When the pot is piled high, it braises slowly and slowly for five hours. I know for some people watching, they heard sheep neck and they thought that's a little bit weird. I knew, because I've been to Uzbekistan, I trusted that it was probably gonna be cooked in some kind of way like this. Slow cook, lots of time for the fat to break down, become just a freaking juice. I mean, we could import this into the USA and that solve our oil problem. What is a good piece? I think, wait, hold on, I found something. Oh. oh I found a tumor. <laughs> they gave us some bonus parts, it looks like. That looks like a kidney, yeah, huh? It is a kidney. You want half a kidney? Yeah. It's gamey. Mm. It's like kind of livery and dry, huh? The rest of this is all neck and there's no more surprise parts. I'm gonna grab this one. Oh, it fell apart. Oh, it's like my parents. It can't even stay together. <laughs> 
here, you just pick around, the meat falls off so tenderly juicy. I don't need even a knife. They didn't even provide us with a knife. You just scrape it off and, oh my God. You know what I'm gonna do? Dip oh, it. Give it a dip in the oil. Mm, 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 that is awesome. And the seasoning, it's just perfect. Beautifully stewed, soft, juicy, fatty. It's even better when you dip it. True, all the drippings that came off of there. Mm. So good, man. That's incredible. It's one of those things, the more I travel, stuff that might seem exotic or strange or unique to most people just seems like, oh, I've had that before. I did actually have the neck of a sheep in Iran, but I gotta say, that was a petite little lamb compared to this. This is thick, but not tough. It's just a lot of delicious, super soft meat. You know why? This meat was not sanctioned. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, so dark. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. All right. The moment. Hold on. What's in here? Oh, it's a key to your car. Rental car. Tub full of milk. You could take a bath in there. Have you ever tried that? Don't ask him. Now I want to know. But he probably hasn't, right? Of course he hasn't, man. You tell me well, that was a dumb yeah. question? <laughs> <It won. laughs> okay. Uh oh. Do you have to take that? Somebody ordering sausage, maybe? Yeah, it's like a sheep emergency. Insane, weird, bizarre. You, did I say unique already? Did you? Uh, what is another word? Um, Flamboyant, marvelous, delicious, tasteful, mouthful. What's the word? Me. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 80% of your vocabulary and you couldn't find it. Here, we're gonna see food like you've never seen before. We're going off the beaten path. Even sometimes we'll be on the beaten path also. I mean, the path is there for a reason. It's there. You, know? you can take a path once in a while, guys. That's fine. This sheep has a neck thicker than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wait, who's somebody younger? Arnold Schwarzenegger is like 90 years old now. This sheep has a neck thicker than the freaking rock. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dwayne yeah, Jones. Good. Yeah. Timely. This is the Kim Kardashian of sheep. Okay, that seems like an easy joke, but it wasn't that easy. Uh, how about this is Megan the Stallion? A stallion is a horse. You eat horse. Yeah. The, horses hello? It, it is questionable, but we don't eat the beautiful horses. We eat the ugly ones. They couldn't fulfill their mission of being pretty, glorious, and running fast. So we're gonna just. We pick them off and eat them. The cruise, what a fun day. Fascinating, incredible, and honestly, no one can tell that there's a green screen behind us. This is not real. Yeah, right now we're in Jamaica and using green screen to fake the Tashkent Mountains. Looks pretty real, right? A huge thank you to the cruise. If you've seen any video of Uzbekistan, it's probably featured this guy in some way or else he was behind it. He is an absolute expert when it comes to all things travel here in Uzbekistan. You've seen Uzbekistan on video. Now you can see it in person. Go to funstance.com. Check it out with my man, the cruise. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. A peace. Should we jump? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs>